You can't drive to Alcatraz. So my $80 blue Yeti mic decided to uh, just go ahead and not record anything for this video. So it's going to sound like I'm, uh, I'm in a tunnel for a little bit. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, thanks for bearing with me. Hi, I'm Abby, and this is my YouTube channel, One Minute Off. Thank you for joining or rejoining me today. And thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoy the ride. You know, I, uh, I listen to a lot of music. I, I mean, Kind of a music gal, I'd say. I love uh, tunes, I do. All jokes aside, I feel like I am pretty open when it comes to like, you know, discovering new music, listening to new genres, except stadium country. Don't come at me with any stadium country ever, please. This is not a safe space for uh, stadium country fans. You know who you are. And that doesn't include Nickelback. <laughs> I know, do with that what you will. That's my opinion. Where were we? Music. I have not always been as open in my music taste as I am at 23. Uh, when I was in high school, I was I was real snooty about my music taste. But I also, I listened to the Beatles and then I also listened to One Direction. So it was like this weird dichotomy of snootiness and snobbery, more S words. I, uh, you know, I like to think I've graduated to a more ma mature level when it comes to this stuff. However, I am not and have never really been an album listener. Like my dad would play CDs all the way through on like drive home and stuff. But I, after that, when I got Spotify on my own, I just never really listened to albums. On Spotify, I have like the songs that from the artists I already like and you know, Sometimes I'll uh, be a little bold, be a little risk taker, and y listen to one or two randomly recommended songs uh, on Spotify. And usually I'm like, yeah, that's, it's enough, I'm good. <laughs> My dad uh, complains a lot that I don't let songs finish in the car. Like before choosing a new one, I, don't, I never let it play out, I just skip to the next one. Do you think, uh, do you think ADHD like bleeds into my music choice or something? I do tend to, you know, this has made my whole liked songs on Spotify look like kind of a hot mess. <laughs> There's like, Portuguese baile funke music. There's They Might Be Giants songs. There's a lot of Billy Joel. There's like Watsky and, and Hoodie Allen. Shout out to my Hoodie Allen fans. And you know, a few years ago, I discovered this function on Spotify called Daily Mix, where they would make a playlist based on the artists you listen to a lot, and throw in some familiar tunes from your, you know, from those guys, as well as some new tunes from some of the people that you might like or might not like. Now I tend to stray now, I tend to stay on the older side of music. If you've seen my other videos, you know that I grew up on classic rock. And I mean, even now, if you look at my playlist uh, today, I'm just entering my 80s, 90s era. Like, I'm not even caught up yet. Maybe I'll get to like the 2020s by the time I'm 50. And then, you know, there's content for the next few years. Once in a while, you know, Spotify will throw a song on these playlists that I really enjoy. Be it some, you know, s synthy, cheesy, love ballad from a former superstar desperately trying to make a comeback or some weird murray head song from 2001 specifically i mean one night in bangkok it's a banger it's 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 like a racist banger a little bit it, yeah i also tend to stay on the side of um listening to things over and over and over again I don't love new music all the time when spotify recommends it to me because I don't think they know me very well. So when I can, you know, stand a song that this app recommends to me for like more than 20 seconds, I'm impressed. This is how I discovered It's Nice to Be Alive by Ballpark Music, which was in an episode of Gossip Girl. Or I'll like, you know, they'll recommend me Tonight Tonight by Hot Shell Ray, and I'll remember what it's like to be 13 again. And I'll download it and listen to it a million times that month, even though the song itself is not good. <laughs> but sometimes, Sometimes they'll recommend a song that is just so, so, so. Sounds like it was written by a robot trying to communicate with humans through song in the modern pop era. Specifically like white bubblegum pop boy music. I think you know what I'm talking about. I feel like George Ezra is a great example. But the absolute best example that I can possibly think of is this, this real song that was recommended to me on Spotify in like, I don't know, 2020, probably during the pandemic. This song, this song is called Alcatraz by Eric Hutchinson. Now, Eric Hutchinson is an American singer-songwriter. He released this song on an album called Easy Street in 2016, which is just 
him take a selfie. But uh, don't let this like disparage the album itself. I took a listen. It's it's good. It's not bad. It's just this one <laughs> this one song. Look, there's no real reason for me to be making this video. I I should not even be giving this the time of day. But this song made me laugh out loud whenever whenever I listen to it. It's it's, it's just so bad. You know, like I had those songs like, it's just so bad I had to save it in my library. Do you know what I'm talking about? You know how sometimes you like you want to kind of sit back on on your floor <laughs> and make yourself feel bad with music. This is the song I use to pull myself out of that depression. You play a bunch of sad songs and you're all in your feelings and then you play this one <laughs> and you feel much better about everything. You can remind yourself that like, wow, somebody made this song. It's a real song. Someone put time and effort and money into this song and people listen to it. Therefore, just do whatever you want as a musician. It doesn't matter. Do not be afraid to release your music because this bottom of the barrel song exists and it's out there for just anyone to download and listen to. You could do whatever you want. Okay, but seriously, let's go through this song because it makes me feral to just listen to like the first few notes. I'm doing this for you guys. I don't even know, I don't even know if this will be copyrighted because Eric Hutchinson, I don't know if he has a lot of follow-up. Well, I guess he does. All right then, I'm, he's made other great songs. Don't let this be. If anything, this video can be like an example of an artist putting out a bad song but like being a fine artist on their own i just this song it fills me with rage it really does that'll probably be the title of this video he's a good musician i don't know why spotify recommended me this song but here we go bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. all right why does it make me angry i don't know this is not the part of the song you know i heard this just driving along i was like okay this is kind of a cute little three chord thing Let's see where this goes. All right, we got some drums. <laughs> but these like first few notes, right? Am I wrong? They fill me with like 2016 bubblegum pop <laughs> vibes. And the drums come in and your your stomach kind of drops like you're on one of those carnival rides. It's not it's not a bad beat. It's not a bad melody by any means. I, it, it does give you enough time to sort of kind of get used to it. But then, the, but then the lyrics start. Feels on the road, feels so alive. King of the West, Prince of the Night. Now, okay, here's the thing. As a disclaimer, I don't need I don't need lyrics to make sense for a song to be good, right? That's not the problem here. Bad lyrics, nonsensical lyrics, can often create a banger. Fat Lip by Sum 41 and Summer Girls by LFO are two wonderful examples of this. They make little to no sense and you can bully me about it in the comments, but like, if the lyrics don't make sense, the song has to actually be fun. Fat Lip makes you like head bang alone in your apartment to the made up word kerfuffin. And Summer Girls makes you just like chuckle and like think about why the hell they said when you take a sip you buzz like a hornet. Billy Shakespeare wrote a whole bunch of sornets. Classic. But this one, it just takes, it just, it, it takes you nowhere, which is ironic because it's a song about driving. Tracing the coast, burning the gas, driving all night. Literally from the get-go, right? We get this very boring scene of a guy driving. He's driving. That's it. He's driving in California. I cannot stress to you how much he, he's driving and he's feeling pretty good. The song goes on to say, you know, he's, he's tracing the coast, burning the gas, more driving things, driving all night. And here's where I lost it. Here's where I had to pull over off the road because I was laughing so hard that I, I just, I, he goes, driving all night. Driving all night till I drive. You can't drive like famously. For those of you who don't know, and I'm sure there are not many of you, Alcatraz Island is an island, an island off the coast of California. Infamously, notoriously a prison that was hard to escape from for most of its existence. I mean, that was it for most of it, but there's a, it's a really interesting history of Alcatraz that kind of merits its own video, honestly. Maybe someone should, uh, maybe someone should make that video. But okay, for as much as the, so the, as the song is like focused on the concept of driving, t wheels on the road, burning the gas. Alcatraz is separated from California by like 1.5 miles 
of open water. Now, at first, I was like, maybe I'm being ignorant, right? Maybe I'm not letting the like maybe i'm not suspending my disbelief enough for this artist to flourish maybe there's another place called alcatraz near california because it has to be near california no but no there's this place in nevada called alcatraz island which i don't think is i don't i don't think he's singing about that there's a place in western australia which is also probably not it and it's also it's also an island that you can't drive through so you see where my confusion begins i'm like okay so it's a song about being free and young and driving somewhere. But then your your destination is not reachable by car. Are you going to drive an airboat across, you know, the water to to Alcatraz Island, the prison? So get up, get up, get up, get up. I want to see where this takes me. Get up, get up, get up, get up. alleged chorus of the song which still gives us nothing uh you know where this is taking you eric alcatraz you said that again somehow problem problem i have with this chorus is not that it's like horrible or not catchy or comes out of nowhere even though it kind of does this is so it's so bland, it's so bland. half of the chorus is the words get up which you know one is not something i would advise while driving and two the, the other half is just this dull monotonous melody disguised as an upbeat pop melody yeah he's got that little e minor change in there just for funsies but like that's it and this could be funsies if we weren't still like very vague on the concept of what the song is even about other than of course driving to alcatraz but the chorus gives us nothing more so what about the next verse? These little towns all fly and fast Space in between me and the past Street lights are on, oh, maybe it's fake In the old shadows, nothing to say Alright, I gotta admit a small part of me does like this part. Uh, like the little background riff is kind of nice. It, it makes me feel a little joyous. I would argue that these lyrics, though, you know, at first seemingly nonsensical, could make sense with the overall message and uh, could even maybe be seen as poetic. If I'm really trying to stick my neck out for Eric here. Like, yeah, the streetlights, they're the patron saints. That's nice. That's a cool image. Like, you know, the lights, they get rid of the old shadows. Of course, his past, like we learned. I feel like Maybe this line could have used a bit more work. I don't know. I don't know if the streetlights are like fake. But this is literally, I, you know, it's kind of almost the best part of the song. Because, you know, the chorus just goes ahead and, and repeats itself over exactly as it did the first time. But it kind of feels like it's, it's a little bit of like a whiplash feeling, like the verse and the chorus. They were originally two different songs and then he just got, like, just decided to smash them together. Now we're at the bridge, which is the part of the song where I realized Oh, I get it now. He's just trying to hit all the basic vague things of like a bubblegum white boy pop song. That's, that was, that's the goal of the song. Got it. The bridge goes like this. mentions in the bridge and if she's literally all he ever had why is she only mentioned now like when the song is almost over i would be i'd be so insulted frankly but this is where it, it clicked for me because it, he figured you know the perfect pop song should have some vague idea of a girl that of course he's still in love with and of course is in his past that he's leaving but he's but he's sad he's driving away from her how sad but that's not what that's not what that's not what the song is a bit about up until this point. It's been about, again, being young and driving to Alcatraz Island, the prison, and being free. So this weird, it's just a random mention of like, and I'm still in love with her. It's, buddy, why not more driving lyrics? Stick with the theme here. First, we were driving to Alcatraz, which is not possible. 
And then and now we were still driving, but now there's a girl that we left behind. And then he doesn't even end it with a rhyme. It's just another mention of this line he's so gosh darn proud of. And I won't stop until Alcatraz. You'll probably need to stop before Alcatraz, though, because the only way to get there is by a ferry. And then again, there's this little section towards the end that, had, to me, kind of seems like it has the potential to be part of a good song and make me think that Eric Hutchinson was not a bad artist. It makes me think, I don't know, perhaps maybe he was just forced at gunpoint to make this song or he had to make it for a car commercial or something. Get your bag, Eric. This part makes me want to listen to more of that. Eric, where is that? The rest of the song is all over the place. It just goes right back to the same chorus with the same maddeningly repetitive, by this point driving me crazy. This <laughs> is a weird concept of driving to a place that's completely surrounded by water and I just can't stop laughing. I can't stop laughing at the same time I just want to tear my hair out listening to this. I'm, I think I'm done. I feel like I'm going insane like listening to this song because like there must be something I'm missing, right? There must be something. I saved it in my Spotify playlist for purely research purposes. On more than one occasion it's crossed my mind as like what not to do, what never to do when you're writing a song. So I guess I just made this video, I don't know, to purge it from my mind and my Spotify library forever. I am never going to think about Eric Hutchinson again. Why Alcatraz? Why not any other any other place in California? Was he trying to be different, like stand out from everyone who wrote about like San Francisco or LA? He still mentions LA in the song, so that like that can't be it. Does he know the history of Alcatraz? I looked it up. He he grew up in Maryland. He must have known about this. I was taught about Alcatraz. I grew up in New York. He he must have known. Did he just take the idea of like the most notorious and hard to escape and hard to get to prison ever with the most notorious criminals ever? Just make a song about driving to it? Okay. Ah oh, yeah, I'm 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 done. That's it for this week's edition of um, Abby Complains About Something Nobody Was Thinking About. Anyway, Eric Hutchinson, if you're watching this, you're fine. I like your music. Maybe it's maybe I'm the problem, but I don't I don't get this one. This was not it. I don't know what happened, but at this point, I'm just too afraid to ask. Thanks for watching. If you if you made it this far, um, this was kind of you know just like a little bit loose scripted video. I, honestly, I just this song got stuck in my head one day and I was like, I, I'm gonna just make a video about this. Um, let me know if you like this. I like, I love complaining about music. I probably have about hundreds of these that I could do. And it feels good to know that, you know, after editing this video, I'll never have to hear that song again. But anyways, um, leave a comment if you decided to take a listen and a laugh. Leave a comment if you're a diehard Eric Hutchinson fan. I don't know what it's trying to say. If you could help me out, that'd be great. I'm Abby, this is One Minute Off, and I'm gonna go schedule a therapy appointment. Yeah, no, no, yeah, Friday should work. No, Friday should be fine. <laughs> no, 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 it's not about the alcohol. I have issues that don't have to do with music, lady.